Hello, you metal pilgrims, and welcome to the new episode of our interview series with our today's guest, amazing Emma Zoldan of Serenia. Among other things, Emma and I will be speaking about Serenia's new studio album, Riddles, Ruins and Revelations, the creative process behind it, different eras of the band's history, different singers, voice techniques, and much much more. Yet before we start, I'd like to take a moment and invite you to join the conversation and subscribe to Metal Pilgrim channel on YouTube and join our communities on Instagram, Facebook or any other social media you actually hang out at to be able to submit your questions for all future interview guests. Stay tuned with the updates and be among the very first ones to find out what is inside the latest rock and metal releases. But in reality, it will actually make me really happy. So here you go. <laughs> Emma, how are you? I'm good. What about you? All is well. All is well. Thank you. Thank finally, you. finally got some finally snow, got so snow. it looks like proper winter now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you in France at the moment, by the way? Yes, I am in France. I would say, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> of course, I would love to be all around the world touring with my with my bandmates, but um, well. That is true. So would we. We would love to see you and all the other bands, as a matter of fact, to live again and all this madness to be over. You know, the sooner the better. But we got what we got. How are you coping with the current time, by the way? How, how are you? How are the bandmates? Everything's well? Every, everyone's safe? Uh, yeah, the first month, I have to say that it was complicated, you know, to, to make plans, to have, a, to have a view on the future, of course. But uh, I don't know, with this new year... And um, the new album releasing coming. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel more optimistic and in a good, uh, in a good energy. <laughs> well, good to hear that. And hopefully, you know, hopefully all this madness is going to be over soon. And and again, as I said, I'll be able personally to catch you live uh, on the road sometime very soon. But you actually mentioned this. But Serenia's uh, uh, new studio album, Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations, is out on February twelfth. Uh, congrats on finishing up the work on it despite any quarantines or anything going on around the world. Um, could you just talk a bit about when did you start working on it and how was the, you know, the creative and recording process like? Well, from what I know, uh, Morten uh, began to work on it uh, as soon as the previous album was uh, released. It's so it's a, been a while. <laughs> a creative guy that is never stopping to compose and uh, he's always on something new so from what i know he began just after that so um something like two years now mm -hmm. uh, years and uh what about the um, uh, uh, creative process of the album uh i think uh, we don't really uh, take part as musicians mm -hmm. and singer and the other guys we don't really take part on the creative process so from my part regarding the um, uh, recording session. Mm -hmm. uh, I begin to record my parts uh, later than it was planned in the mm -hmm. beginning because of the situation. Uh, we were supposed to begin the recordings in February last year and the first lockdown happened, unfortunately, and we had to move it six months later. So I begin to record my parts in August. Mm -hmm. In August. Okay, so did you, did you actually meet together or did you exchange files over internet? I came to uh, Norway to oh, record, so I met Morten. Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's important to 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 be together to talk about uh, the songs and uh, what we want to absolutely to, do. to grab this feeling, right? Of because uh, you guys are a band, right? It's not one person recording one thing, the other one, you know, recording the other thing. You guys are a band. It's a living organism in a way, right? And you have to interact uh, to make it work. I. I, I would assume so. And what are some of the lyrical lines? Since, I mean, you know them better than anyone else. Uh, you were the one performing them. Uh, some of the lyrical lines maybe running through this album. Mainly, I think the kind of uh, things <clears throat> like that Serenia uh, likes to, mm -hmm. to go through. Uh, I mean, uh, life, death, uh, uh, questioning, mental questionings. Uh, and on this album, I think maybe the theme that is uh, really... Uh, um, important is uh, time that is passing, mm -hmm. and um, that's probably the theme that is um, important in this album, in my opinion. 
It's pretty interesting. And uh, I was able to hear the album actually a bit earlier than most others. Um, I loved it. I enjoyed it a lot, to be honest with you. I think you personally did an amazing job on vocals uh, more than any other guys as well, you know, on the instruments and, uh, you know, back in vocals as well. Um, one question I got, though, is that on this record, you decided kind of to deviate a little bit from the original sound, original recipe, and infuse a little bit more of this modern electronic, um, you know, vibes in a way. Could you say that this is like a natural evolution, you know, of the Serenia sound, or did you just try to, you know, broaden your fan base and, uh, you know, reach out to more people with this decision? Yes, I think it was a natural evolution of the uh, of the the band. Uh, we wanted something more uh, more fresh, more modern in our sound. I think it's important for a band, as I always say, uh, for a band that is existing for such a long time, like uh, Serenia. It's important to be able to renew the sound, to uh, make new propositions, to uh, to take uh, new directions. It's um, uh, taking some risks sometimes because we can uh, risk, yeah. The fans, of course, but I think it's interesting to take the risk, or or it can be boring doing all the time the same uh, the same thing. So we wanted really something more uh, more fresh, more more something really new. I I, I I can agree with you that it's definitely fresh and modern. This is hundred percent. And so far from what I you know heard and saw on the internet, you know, given the fans' feedback, it's been received pretty well, you know, in terms of the singles and everything you guys released so far from the album. So I, and I, I imagine that any Serenia fans, fans will stick around with the band and they will enjoy this album a lot because it's still Serenia, it sounds like Serenia, yeah, it's, it's got this, you know, infusions of this new sound, yet at the same time, you can close your eyes and uh, say that it's definitely a Serenia album, right? We definitely don't lose the Serenia essence and identity. 100%. 100%. And do you personally have a favorite track from the album or it's like choosing a favorite kid? An impossible question. Yeah, it's very difficult for me because it's changing all the time. Every time I'm, I'm listening to them, I, I, I change my mind. You know, I think it's a really great album. Uh, in my opinion, I really love this, uh, this uh, opus. And uh, there is a lot of good songs, in my opinion. And... Uh, if I had to choose, I would say um, We Come to Ruins, mm -hmm. just because it's uh, probably the song that is the more diverse, uh, that shows a lot of uh, different uh, atmospheres and uh, directions taken. Mm -hmm. So maybe this one. That's true. That's true. It's d definitely a very diverse track. And I actually enjoyed it. If I would pick one, I would say that this one as well, to be honest with you. The, this would be my favorite track. And But you also did a cover on the famous Voyage Voyage. Uh, I, I remember that song from back, I don't know, how many years ago. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually loved it back then, you know, when it came out. And uh, hearing it, um, you know, from you, it was really interesting with the Serenia uh, take of this um, of this song, but was it weird for you to actually sing in French uh, in Serenia or not really? Not really. It's not the first time we already experimented it uh, uh, from the beginning when I, I recorded the French uh, version of uh, uh, Ian's Embrace on the Days of Dollars. Yes. Yeah. On on Arcanist role yeah. Ian also. I think Morton likes to uh, every time. Uh, with every singer, he had he he likes to 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 uh, uh, explore the musicality of mm -hmm. uh, the singers' uh, uh, native languages. Uh, Aileen sang also in Spanish mm -hmm. uh, albums, so it's, yeah, it's interesting. I like it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I I actually enjoyed the cover a lot. Like I, it's been on repeat on my on my uh, player for a couple of days now. <laughs> um, so, any plans to actually support the album with the you know with the online event while you cannot go on tour? Uh, it's complicated for us as uh, uh, we are all uh, all the members of the band are coming from a different place in the world, so it's complicated mm -hmm. technique to arrange it. So we are uh, for now it's. It sounds uh, complicated, but we are thinking about solutions if uh, the situation with COVID uh, lasts for uh, we don't know how many time. But uh, so we we have to uh, <laughs> we have to think about solutions, of course. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, this is kind of a new reality we all have to adapt to at the moment. But hopefully, you know, I personally believe that rock and roll and uh, 
you know, metal, symphonic metal or any other metal lives in clubs and festivals and not in digital world. So we would love to see you live, um, actually live. <laughs> Um, and while we are on the topic of the album, uh, this uh, this is pretty much the last one from it, but um, uh, it has been asked by several people, believe it or not, but this album is not set to be released on vinyl, uh, vinyl records. I, myself, I don't know if you can see it, I'm a huge vinyl geek. I listen to yeah. anything I can on uh, on the records. You do? <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, so, so. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This whole feeling of holding it. But this album is not set to be released on vinyl uh, for some reason. Do you know if anything will change in that regard? I I think that it's not planned for now, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But hopefully in the future things can uh, evolve differently. I don't know if maybe the demons from uh, the fans is uh, big enough. Mm -hmm. But for now it's not planned. Okay, makes sense. Well, maybe we'll see it one day and I'll be able to hold it. Uh, you know, this will be fun. Uh, and for now, I, I think we should deviate from the album just a bit. And um, a couple of questions that, you know, some of the fans especially submitted, because this, uh, this is something I, I would really like to hear you, you know, uh, kind of talk about, uh, is that um, one thing I personally love about Serenia, that different eras of the band have, you know, different singers, of course, right? With them... Um, quite different vocal ranges and different vocals in general, voices. And this is amazing. And this is what, you know, I and a lot of other fans actually love Serenia for. One question, though, was, was it hard for you to adjust your voice to some of the older songs, especially soprano songs, you know, which were written for previous singers, for predecessors, um, or, or not really? Well, uh, as you said, we have... All we, we all have really different ranges and uh, tones and colors and everything. Sure. And uh, for example, Aileen and me, we have totally opposite uh, <laughs> ranges. She's super high. Uh, That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> opposite. So, of course, on some songs for me, it's not uh, comfortable it, because, just because it's uh, not my range. It's uh, just like is if I had to, uh, you know, to uh, wear uh, clothes that are too tight for me. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why it's very important to to make the good choice in terms of uh, set list. Uh, I have experimented to to sing some uh, some uh, really high songs just to please the audience because mm -hmm. there are ones that the fans want to to hear on stage, of course. Uh, but I always try to uh, not to take too much risks in terms of uh, range of. Mm -hmm. as when you have to perform uh, uh, 20 shows in 20 days. <laughs> so it's important to, yeah, to make the good choice. And I never try, never, never try to imitate one or another singer mm -hmm. when I sing, for example, uh, uh, The Path to Decay or uh, um, uh, The Other Side, for example. That are two songs that I like a lot and that are more in my range. Yeah. I never try to imitate. I think it's important to keep my to make my own proposition, my own uh, interpretation of it. And um, so it sounds differently, of, different, of course. And, and I think this is, you know, this is exactly the right thing, right? I mean, you, you mark the different era, you mark the different, uh, you know, with a different vocalist and everything, and the music is different. And this is amazing. And this is, uh, this is how it should be. As, as we were talking about, right, uh, the natural evolution of the Serenia sound. And uh, it, it's cool. Um, and you actually started speaking about this. And I'm actually curious with the following question uh, about how, how do you keep your voice in such a great shape? Do you have a secret routine uh, for something like this? You know, 20 shows in 20 days, it's hard, right? And uh, you actually have to take care of your voice a lot, I imagine. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, I had I had a chance to, to, uh, to, to learn a classical technique mm -hmm. uh, with, a, with, a, with the opera and everything. And I think it's probably uh, the secret to, to, uh, to have the you know, the resistance uh, for, um, for the singer career. I think if you have this basis, this uh, strong basis, you can sing everything you want. And it uh, it's brings you, you know, kind of uh, uh, strength mm -hmm. in a certain way. And um, uh, I have been uh, used, you know, with a classical uh, uh, teaching and everything to, to work 
daily, every day, mm -hmm. every day. I do vocalizations. It's important as the voice is a muscle and uh, it needs to be trained. And I feel the difference when, I, when I'm in the holidays or vacation mm -hmm. and I don't sing for some days. It takes more time, you know, to <laughs> feel like, it's like going to the gym. <laughs> you need to keep yourself in shape all the time. Yeah. It's a daily, uh, daily work, of course. Wow, that's, uh, I, I imagine it's pretty hard, you know, uh, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> um, and do you have any personal vocal heroes, anyone you really look up to? Uh, not really. I have a, a lot of people that I like to, to, to listen, but I always try not to keep a distance, not to, to, to be uh, too much uh, inspired mm -hmm. by someone, you know. Um, I love that vocal, big voices, uh, great ranges, uh, voices that are able to, to uh, go from uh, the very low notes and going to the super high ones. Uh, there is a lot of people that I'm a fan of, but I always try to, um, to keep my own uh, personality mm -hmm. and not to, to be too much uh, inspired. Yeah, that's uh, that. That absolutely makes sense. To be honest, you got a piano back there, a beautiful one. Yeah. Do you have yeah. time to play a lot? Yeah, I I have more time for it uh, since the the, the <laughs> lockdown. So uh, yeah, yeah um, same thing here. I I I was a piano player back you know back in the day, and uh, yeah, and uh, finally restored my my old uh, family relic uh, during the pandemic, and uh, finally got some time to play again. And uh, what do you personally listen to, you know, if it's not Serenia or any of the symphonic metal? I am listening to a lot of different things. I, I always find interesting uh, uh, things in every kind of music. It can be metal, of course, rock, uh, classical, sometimes in traditional music mm -hmm. also. I, I really love to be surprised in music. So I listen to a lot of different things. I can't say today that I have a favorite uh, a favorite uh, uh, genre of music. I think um, there is very interesting things in uh, everything. That makes sense. Perfect. Thank you very much. I don't want to, you know, keep you here for too long. So the last question, if you don't mind, this is something we usually do to close the episode. And I would absolutely love to hear from you. Do you have one craziest or the most memorable story from your touring life that you can possibly share with us? Yeah, maybe this uh, story I was talking about maybe some days ago on a, on a video. Something that happened in, uh, where was it? I'm not sure if it was in Ukraine or maybe, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm from Ukraine myself, so. <laughs> in Latvia, it was in Latvia, <laughs> not in Ukraine. <laughs> and uh, I remember this moment we had to fail this day, to uh, face this day, a big fail from the security. Oh. And uh, that was a crazy story because uh, uh, when it came the moment for us to come on stage and to perform, it was very, very late in the evening and uh, almost all the crowd was drunk as hell. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this guy that was in front of the stage, you know. And uh, in a moment, uh, this uh, guy came on the stage and was just in front of me. And I didn't really know how to, to react because, uh, you know, we all have in mind what uh, happened with a Pantera singer. Yes. <laughs> you never know how to yeah, react, exactly. you know. And, and uh, after maybe, it, it was very, uh, it happened really fast. And uh, after maybe one second, I saw Nils, the guitar player that was uh, kneeling on the stage shout, um, uh, punching in the face, the guy, <laughs> never do that again, okay, you hear me, never do that again, I can tell you, and, <laughs> and I was continuing to do the show, singing in the microphone, and every, everybody was uh, still playing on stage, and I was so surrealistic. This oh my God. It's like a real life on stage mosh. <laughs> yeah. But from this day, I know that I have a good uh, bodyguard on stage. So. <laughs> true. <laughs> true, you're not afraid to walk after the show alone at home if you are to view the city. Um, Emma, thank you so much for your time. Any last message for the fans? Anything you want to share with them? Well, we are super excited with uh, sharing uh, with you the new album in 10 days now, yeah. I think. 
So it's very exciting, and uh, we just hope that we that you will enjoy it as uh, as uh, as much as we do. And uh, and we're really looking forward to be back on stage really soon. We hope. Fingers crossed. We Absolutely. are missing you as hell. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Again, I would love to catch you guys live, preferably in Kiev, in Ukraine, uh, or you know anywhere else in Europe. I, you know, and we all can travel again, and everything is going to get back to normal. Again, a reminder to everyone: Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations is out on February twelfth. Make sure you check it out. It's a great album. Um, Emma, thank you so much. Have a great thank day. You. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Perfect. See ya. Bless. See. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, perfect.